Here on the bench I have a Crosley Model 158 that I completely got, have gone over and restored. I do not have the cabinet. A friend of mine is uh, working on the cabinet. I'm not that good at cabinet work. I have a few radios that in the shop here that I have restored but the cabinets need to be restored also. That has never been done. But on this one here it's a cathedral and I do want to get this cabinet looking really nice so I can use it at home as my own personal radio. I do this as a hobby um, and that's all. I don't uh, do any work for anyone else strictly as a hobby. I've had this workshop for like I say more years than I care to count. Uh, well over 40 years um, and I've always enjoyed dabbling on antique uh, radios and televisions. Uh, primarily of course tube stuff. Uh, I don't know too much about transistors and things. Uh, basically just if the, you know, the circuit board needs, uh, it's got a crack in it, stuff like that, but when it comes to dealing with that sort of thing, I'd rather leave it to someone who knows more about it. Uh, I don't know a lot about uh, electronics, but I, what I do know, I'd like to share with you. So, um, hang on just a minute, I'll show you what I've done to this radio here, in the event that uh, some of you guys probably may be uh, wanting to restore an antique radio. I can, what little knowledge I have, I'd like to pass it on to you. Um, so, hang on just a minute, I'll flip this guy over and I'll show you what I've done to it. Okay, here is the underside of the chassis. And everything has uh, been replaced, the exception of perhaps a few resistors, such as this dog bone here. And uh, one of these flexible resistors down here. They were pretty much intolerant, so I left them. Um, here, I have the antenna coil was open, uh, so I had to make a little um, network here to get it to, uh, to work. So the radio wasn't as, as sensitive as it would be if it had its uh, input stage tuned. But anyways, I also added a, a fuse over here, uh, which the radio did not originally have. Now the original schematic was quite small so I had blown it up on a copy machine and mounted it on this piece of cardboard so that I can read it with my poor eyesight. Now as I said I had to make up a little uh, sort of a network a little 5 picofarad uh, capacitor that directly connects the antenna to the radio if you look at the front end of the radio, you'll see where the uh, open is and where I added the open uh, cap is added, 5 picofarad cap is added right at this point here because this coil here is open, this antenna coil right here on the uh, secondary. So therefore we're taking the feed from, with this uh, added 5 picofarad cap to the antenna, where the antenna screw is, and going directly down on the, on the secondary side of this coil. In addition to, here we're adding, we're actually on the ABC bus, we're adding a 100K resistor. That is right here. So this is the coil that's open. In relation to the other coils, it's in the center of the radio here. And this is the wire, the shielded wire for the antenna. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this radio back over and I'll uh, plug it in, turn it on, and hook a little antenna wire onto it and uh, let you hear what she sounds like. Before I do that I want to make a notation. It's going to have a tinny sound because the speaker's covered with uh, cardboard temporarily to protect it. The cone was uh, torn quite badly because whoever mounted uh, the speaker into the cabinet wasn't very careful and the studs uh, tore the cone in four or five different places. And the cone was pretty well brittle to begin with and it had a lot of tears. So the cone has been repaired but in order for me not to get clumsy with it in the handling and so forth, I put this protective cardboard on here. I use uh, 
wire ties, and this is all temporary. I can cut this off, and you know, once I'm ready to mount this into the cabinet, this uh, enables me to handle the speaker without a problem. In addition to that, I had to add more wire here for the field coil and so forth. All these wires were rotted out, and um, the insulation was coming off, and we were down to bare wires. So I found some cloth covered wire that looks pretty authentic to the original and simply ran it inside the radio here. I'm not the neatest wirer and with my bad eyesight I have to do a lot of hook and pinch and solder. I've been doing it for years this way and it works out for me. But this is not going to go into the Smithsonian Institute so <laughs> it works, it's safe and that's all I cares. Who's going to look underneath here? You are but once this is in the cabinet, no one's going to see this. Okay, we're picking up the fluorescent lights here and everything else in this shop, and I've only got a small bunch of clip leads, and it's really clipped on the back of this, and it's picking up a lot of static. But let's give you an idea. Like I say, it's we got the speaker pretty well uh, muffled up here with this cardboard. So it's not going to have the best sound. Uh, what I had found here too is the capacitor bushings, the rubber bushings get really old and cracked and I simply have to tighten them up here, tighten these screws up here so that the cold tuning cap was really shaking as you move it. Now it's a lot more solid but I have to be careful not to tighten too much because the rubber will literally disintegrate. Picking up a lot of interference in the fluorescent lights and stuff in here. I think that'll be about it. I hope uh, I've had uh, some uh, influence on uh, some of you people there and maybe uh, get an idea of how to restore these things. These are not uh, that frightful to work on. You just got to be careful because you got high voltages and so forth to deal with. Uh, so remember safety is number one. Use um, um, a dim bulb uh, in series with the uh, input line. Uh, when you first fire it up, and never fire it up until you replace the electrolytics. Do not you fire up an old radio and never plug it in. Always replace the filter caps. Check out for shorts. Pull all the tubes and see if the transformer runs cool. The transformer should run cool with no tubes in the circuit. It should run cool a very lukewarm. So I want to I want to thank you for watching my video and I hope that uh, maybe I've helped some of you out there who want to pursue this hobby. It's a fantastic hobby uh, and I really enjoy doing it. Well thank you very much and uh, maybe I'll do another video on something else in the future. I don't know yet. But anyways, while you're on YouTube, please watch my son Tommy. He's a great guitar player and I'm proud of him and uh, he's on there under my screen name, Old64Goat. So if you watch him, I'd appreciate it. Thank you.